Hello and welcome to Apex Incident Tips number one, episode 176. We're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi, Marwa. So I've done this close to 176 times. I uh, had a couple of, uh, of guest hosts when I wasn't around, but um, today I almost goofed up the, the intro and everything, uh, even with help from, uh, from folks. But, uh, so, uh, but we're here live uh, at 12.05 Eastern Time. Thanks for joining again, Marwa. Um, so today we're gonna have a quick, just a conversation a little bit about um, the, the difference between value protected and st session state protection within Apex applications. It's something that I know, I know it really well, but it still hangs me up sometimes. And so I think it's, it's valuable to, to really understand what these things are and when they apply and when they don't apply, some are easier than others. Um, and sometimes the messages don't really align with what we're talking about. So Marwa, I'm gonna share my screen. We'll start talking about it. Um, you can give me your, your thoughts on it and we'll go from there. Just as a setup, before I turn the timer, I used the create wizard to create a, an interactive report and a form. That's it, interactive report and form. Um, and I just used the wizard, and then I added a few buttons and, and an extra, a couple extra items, but all the other stuff is just normal. Um, so, okay. So that, that's it. So, so I wanna look at, to start, the hidden item on this page that is the depth now. And so two things about this are value protected is turned on for this hidden item, and session state protection is turned on right here check some required. So Marwa, what, what, what do those two things do for me? So those two attributes would prevent uh, malicious manipulation of the item of the value, would protect the value of this item. But it seems that they are different. They don't behave the same. Right, so you, to, to fully protect it, you need both of those items. Um, but. But what does that mean? Why? So, so let's start with checksum required. What, what, what does that do for me? So that would protect um, the item uh, on the URL. We would see that actually on the URL, which means when moving from one page to another, it's seen there. You right. Can so the checksum. I can't plus that up. At least I, I, there is a way, and I've forgotten. I actually did not a tip on how on a Mac to do that. There's some keystroke that I can do to show to show this bigger, but right here we have P5 depth no equals 10. So right? if you try if you try to change the 10 with a different value, 20 for mm -hmm. example, you'll get an error. Ah, okay. So that is, as you said, the session state protection. Right. What is this other one then? The, the value protected the value attribute. Protected. Oh, so I'm gonna, uh, we've already cheated. I'm starting the timer. So what is value protected? So this, this setting is for the hidden items. We won't find that setting for other type of items. And it actually protects the item on the client page so that the end users won't try to uh, update or change the value of that hidden so item. I'm gonna, go find, I'm gonna go find that item. That's P5 underscore depno. So there it is right there, P5 depno. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna change that 10 to a 20. And when I apply the changes, oh, so that's that's that one there. It's when I that's I hit that apply one. Okay, but this is session state protection violation, not value yeah, protection. It, like you said, it does not align much with the name of the attribute that we used. It seems like it's session state protection, but it's actually the value protected setting. Okay. Okay. So if I were to turn this off, I could submit the page in, but I, I still couldn't change it in the URL. Okay. No, I get that. Are there, are there any other item types that have value protected like that? Yes. It, it's the display only type. Uh, and there we prepared an example for that. So I have a display only item here. And I don't see I don't see that same switch because it applies automatically. It is set automatically. Okay, so with this display only item, so I'm going to come back here. I'm going to refresh this page. I have this display only item, and if I if I change that display only item to something else, I I'll get the same error, 
right? Right. So I have this little thing that lets me change it. I can change it by inspecting it um, the same way, or I can click here and it'll just set it to whatever I have here. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I click here, it will change it to that. So if I do that and I hit apply changes, same error. Same error. It behaves like if it was a hidden item, but it's a display only item. Okay, so display only items also don't let you submit in if you change them. And there's no way to turn that off. They always behave that way. Exactly. Okay, great. So there's a middle ground here that we haven't talked about. And that middle ground, I'm going to refresh that page. And that middle ground is if I use a dynamic action, right? If I use a dynamic action and I say set display only, so I've changed this display only to accounting. And let's take a look at it again. The display only item, it's display only. It, um, it does not have session state protection. So session state protection is unrestricted. Um, and it does store the value in session state. So right here, if I look at my session state, I'll be able to see that display only item. So that display only item, it currently has ABC123. But if I, if I use a dynamic action to set that, Will it, um, will, it, will it go into the session state or, will, or won't it? Because it is read only. It, it will go into session state. You can try it. Okay. Let me do that. And I go here. I did not get any kind of error. And it did, in fact, put it into session state. Yes. So on this level, it's not protected anymore. Okay. So, so if I want that display only item to be truly protected from a dynamic action as well, submitting and being a dynamic action, how do I do that? Yes. So, so here, this is our display only item and it's, it is display only, but if I change this, this setting, now I'm not able to, right? This is the setting. That, that is the key for, for dynamic actions. You, dynamic actions actually require this to be unrestricted in order to pass them in. So right here, if I do that and save it, now when I refresh this page and I try to change it again, so we've got accounting in there right now. If I, if I type something else in here and I set it this way and I set display, now I get an Ajax call issue. Um, so this time the checksum doesn't match, so it won't work. It, I think it's an important thing to understand that you've got these three areas, right? You've got the URL, you've got submitting a page in, but then you have dynamic actions. And that's the one that's, that, that I think is often confusing to me, um, is that dynamic actions are actually handled by session state protection, not by the value protected. Not um, by the value protected, yes. Right. Um, and so that is the tip. Um, I'm going to say, I think that the, um, a big reason that this applies is because if you have a hidden item and you haven't turned on session state protection and you're doing any kind of dynamic action processing with that hidden item without session state protection, that can get passed in and it can get manipulated by the user. Um, it could, and that's a risk, yes. So... That is our five minutes, and I think we've got uh, I think we've got our tip in. You've got these you've got two settings, but three places they can apply. Can you run me exactly. through again? <laughs> so one one more time. The URL, what applies to the URL? So it's the session state protection setting. Okay. And then submitting a page in with a button, which one is that? Uh, a value protected setting. Right. Okay, and then any dynamic action where you pass session state in? It's the session state protection set setting. Okay, okay. I think I've got all of it. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, so, so that's it. That's today's tip. Um, uh, Marwa, I didn't come up with any post-tip wisdom uh, this week. Anything from you? Um. No, unfortunately, but we'll prepare something next time. Next week, next week, we'll, we'll, that's what people really come for. They don't come from the Apex Instant Tips. They come for uh, all, the, all the wisdom. So. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks. If you, if you came uh, just for five minutes, that's all you got. Do all the things. Uh, 
send a letter to your mom, tell her about the show, like, subscribe, all that. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye.